So <clears throat> we are, uh, uh, you know, starting organic chemistry. Okay. Now, organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon atoms. So it is, uh, and it's like changing gears here. So we are, so far we have been doing calculations and things like that. So from now on, no more calculations. Okay. Uh, so, but uh, this chemistry is very interesting chemistry uh, happening in nature, chemistry of carbon atoms, um, and uh, and the way the reactions happens are different from the reactions that we have seen so far. Uh, so, organic. So earlier, you know, uh, so the name organic came because uh, it was it was thought that. Uh, uh, these compounds can only uh, come from organic, that means from life forms, okay? And um, uh, so it's not possible for us to do it unless there is divine intervention, okay? Uh, so the divine in intervention concept uh, was later discarded because Wohler in 1828 uh, uh, could uh, make urea, which is organic substance. Uh, in the lab and so that the yeah, organic substances can be uh, can be made um, in the lab by human being and now everything uh, that we use mostly are manufactured in the lab even though the source initial source had been nature so organic chemistry is basically the chemistry uh, uh, of uh, carbon uh, carbon in general okay now apart from carbon that is uh, other element that is involved uh, in making organic compounds is hydrogen, largely. And then smaller elements like uh, elements in small amount are oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus. <coughs> now, the basic organic compound that you can think of is a hydrocarbon. Mm. Okay, so carbon and hydrogen. Now, if you think what hydrocarbon is, uh, is basically uh, uh, a very featureless compound. The only thing you can do with the hydrocarbon is burning. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and it makes carbon dioxide and water. Uh, now, when the hydrogen gets replaced by some other uh, atom, uh, it starts to get features. Okay. Function. And we say that this is that this is a, a functional group, um, okay, because it gives function uh, to the molecule. Uh, uh, yes, Diana, so um, yeah, you want me to upload now, right now? Uh, so if you, if you look at uh, carbon compounds, why is carbon unique? Of all elements that you see in the periodic table, it is only carbon that can form chains, okay? Carbon-carbon uh, chains, which you call catenation. And because of that, what happens is uh, carbon, this, with the same formula, the branching and all those carbon can have, uh, you know, uh, like with the same formula, you can have so many different compounds. So if you think of, uh, glucose, okay, C6H12O6. That's the molecular formula. But with the same molecular formula, you can have, you know, 16 other different things, okay. Uh, uh, fructose, galactose, mannose, they have the same formula. So what's the difference between them? The carbon linkage just change, okay. Uh, so and that's the uniqueness. Now, if you think of uh, a carbon compound, there are hundreds of carbon atoms there. So uh, it can it can just introduce so much of variation into the single compound just by rearranging the atoms, okay? So uh, if you look at the uh, you know bonding in organic compound, this is the simplest of the molecules that you can get. One carbon-carbon bond and the rest are all hydrogen. And these are called alkanes. So all the bonds that you see around the carbon atom, are single bonds, okay? Um, and this is the simplest kind of organic molecule that you can get. Now, and this organic chemistry is very systematic, okay? So the systematic naming, 
there's a, there are rules that you should follow because there are thousands and thousands of compounds. If you do not follow a system, you'll get lost. Okay, so the IPEC, which is our uh, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, they set down and devise these rules. Okay, just like there are some rules for, you know, inorganic chemistry nomenclature. We have we have, um, you know, rules for hydrocarbons. So alkanes. Uh, you know, with one carbon atom, uh, we have this prefix meth, okay? So meth, and if it is alkane, uh, we put an end to it. So anything that is one carbon atom will, will carry the, uh, you know, prefix of meth, okay? So if it is alkane, we say, we add an N and say methane, okay? Now if it's alcohol, we'll say methanol. So we just add an all to it at the end. Okay, uh, so eth means two, prop means, so this up to 10, you need to memorize, okay? Um, all the way up to 10. So, uh, and this is, you know, uh, meth, eth, prop, but, you know, paint is five, hexa, okay, hepta, this is like the same fixes that we, that we had in, in organic chemistry, okay? The only four, the first four are different, okay? So, uh, and you take that prefix and add a N to it, okay? Now, so there are different ways of writing formulas. In inorganic chemistry, is not that important. But uh, in organic chemistry, uh, the linkage is very, very important. As I said, glucose, uh, you can have uh, 66H12O6M formula with 16 different compounds, okay? So how the carbon atoms are linked to one another or other atoms are linked to carbon are very, very important. So we depend on this. So in organic chemistry, whenever you think of formulas, uh, there must be some kind of linkages that must be shown, okay? So if you look at uh, uh, the molecular formula of, um, so uh, the C6H4, okay? So this is like a long molecule. Okay, so this, uh, you know, this figure above, yeah, where you, ca you can see the carbon hydrogen to three hydro uh, carbon uh, uh, attached to three hydrogens individually, and you can see the bonds. This is called the expanded formula. Okay, now you can condense this moiety. We say moiety that part as a CH three. Okay, uh, so. Or a CH, uh, a CH2 can be uh, condensed, uh, CHH can condense to CH2. So this is still okay. That means I can write CH3, CH2OH. At least you can see the linkage. And hydrogen, um, you know, is kind of a common element. So you can shorten it further. And that you can see in the skeletal formula. So, like if you're drawing a lipid, 20 molecules, 20 atoms, okay, it's like a chain who writes to write hydrogen because we know it is there. So uh, you just draw by lines. And in the skeletal formula, remember the corners represent carbon atoms as well as the two ends. Now hydrogen is implied, if nothing is written, it carries hydrogen. So the three hydrogens at the end because total carbon can carry four bonds. Um, so uh, there are, uh, if nothing is written at the end, that, that, so, so you, have, you can easily, you know, make up for that four by adding hydrogen. The corners, you know, represent two hydrogens, okay, CH2s. And, and this is basically how the compound will look like, okay? <clears throat> and so this is CCH14. Uh, and this is the molecular model, the, uh, the ball and stick molecular model. Uh, in the expanded form, you can write it like this. You can show all the carbon hydrogen bond in the condensed structural formulas. Uh, you know, you just write the CS3, CH2, CH2, CS3. Uh, and in the skeletal form, it's just the skeletal. Okay. So, and if the molecule gets bigger and bigger, it will depend more on the skeletal formula. Now, many of you uh, will go into biochemistry, 
microbiology or biological field. And they are, these are the molecules they're going to deal with, organic molecules, because that is where organic chemistry started. And that is where, you know, nature cooks all these compounds. And these are giant molecules we're talking about. Okay. Um, and uh, so, you know, practice how to, how to draw this structure uh, properly, properly in the sense uh, with straight line corners, because uh, initially you might might not uh, be uh, might not understand the full importance of this, but when the compound really gets bigger, uh, your structure needs to look good in order to look around uh, how this compound can behave. Okay, to analyze that compound, and in nature all interactions depend on shape and uh, charge distribution. Okay, everything. It, it can be a hormone receptor inter interactions or drug interaction, uh, protein DNA interactions, whatever you look at. So, uh, so we depend on, on, on these structures. So conformations. So what is conformation? Now this carbon-carbon bond, so carbon-carbon bond can easily rotate. Okay, so there's a easy rotation. So if you look at this, this is called uh, <coughs> uh, conformation. So when you are basically um, doing the different uh, stuff, getting the different structures, um, each of these structures are called conformations, okay, as, as, as you fully rotate. So if you look at this uh, carbon, so uh, in this structure, you can see that uh, is the carbon carbon bond, the carbon at the front and this carbon at the back. And if you turn the carbon at the front, okay, the CS3s can be on the same side or the CS3 can be on the opposite side. Okay, but you know, they are actually represent two different compounds if they're stably like that. But at room temperature, since uh, this molecule keeps rotating, uh, we really don't see much of a difference, uh, but the property becomes an average. But think of a situation where uh, you might uh, be able to, let's say you are able to separate these two compounds, these two conformations, then their behavior will be different. In large molecules where sometimes rotation is restricted, then we do see different properties for these two different compounds. Okay, so th these are called conformations and, and these isomers are called conformational isomers or conformers. So now in organic chemistry, so this is a cartoon diagram. If you think of it, this carbon-carbon bond, we did a straight line and this hydrogen moving around like that. But uh, it's not like flat like this is a three dimensional structure uh, that you see in this ball and stick model. Now in this three dimensional structure, uh, you have these, uh, you know, angles here, which are 109.5 degree. Okay, it's called the tetrahedral structure. So even though we are drawing it in a straight line, it's never straight, it's a zigzag molecule. And also uh, no matter how you bend it, as long you know you, you can you know go through one end of the chain to the other, it represents the same molecule. So all these four different all these you know, how many one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different drawings, as well as the skeletal formulas here, represent the same formula. So they have fewer, you know, uh, hydrogen atoms. We are talking about cycloalkanes. So cycloalkanes are cyclic compounds. Uh, which is basically, uh, you know, the two ends. You can think of this uh, taking this rope and joining the two ends. Now, when you are joining the two ends, uh, you cannot form a bond without, you know, eliminating two hydrogens. So they have two hydrogen less uh, than a similar linear compound. Okay. Uh, so all these compounds uh, that you see, so if you compare with their linear structure. Okay, there are two hydrogens less. And for the general hydrocarbons that you see here, 
the general formula that we write is CNH2 n plus 2. Okay. Now, how do I get that? So if you look at this uh, you know, formula here, there's CH2, CH2, CH2. That means uh, if you have a long chain, all these interior carbons will have two hydrogen. So that's why it's CNH2N. The last carbon uh, will have two extra hydrogen, so CNH2N plus two. Okay, but when you are doing the cyclic compound, that two hydrogens are not there. So the general formula is CNH2N, okay? And these are the ways you can draw uh, these uh, cyclic structures. Now, the other thing that uh, you can note here, the cyclic compounds uh, like the cyclopropane, okay, um, the angle is 60 degree. Uh, but the carbon-carbon angle uh, is more stable at 109.5 tetrahedral. So these are tetrahedral carbon. They want to be uh, 109.5, but they are not. So they are strain molecules. Cyclopropane, cyclobutane, they are strain. But as you move on to uh, cyclopentane, cyclohexane rings, that means five-member ring, six-member ring, uh, they are more stable because the angles almost approach the 109.5. So in nature, when you look at it, you know, and because the two ends are closed, they, they are going to be less reactive. Uh, you will see the cyclic structure. So um, like um, uh, if you look at the ribose ring in the DNA, it's a five member ring. Okay, glucose is a six member ring. Okay, abundant molecules. That means that is preferred five member and six member our preferred structure, okay? And we'll learn more about carbohydrates and glucose later. So cycloalkanes are basically uh, alkanes that are cyclic, okay? Okay, draw the condensed structural formula for alkanes um, or the skeletal formula for the cycloalkanes for each of these uh, following. Okay, so methane, meth is one carbon, Okay, CH4. Now for meth, yeah, you really cannot write a cyclic for a skeletal formula because you have to put a dot. Okay, um, so it's, uh, and we usually do not write for ethane also. It's just one line. Okay, uh, ethane is C2A6 for pentane onward. Okay, uh, or butane, propane and butane. We can write skeletal formulas, or we is more convenient to write it like that. So pentane is C5H12. Uh, so CNH2N plus two. So C5H12. Cyclopropane, okay. Is the, so when I see prop, that means three carbon atom. Pent, five carbon atom, okay. So cyclo, when you have this uh, prefix cyclo in front of it, then that means it is a cyclic compound, okay. <clears throat> And same here. Now, alkanes, you know, they can get branched like this. Okay, so uh, this compound is butane. Now, the carbon chain, four, if there's four carbon, that's butane. Okay, and the formula, if you look at the formula C4H10, now the same molecule can get branched. Okay, so if the isobutane. Okay, and they are different in properties, They're totally different compounds. Okay, even though getting the same number of carbon atoms, same molecular formula, they represent two different compounds. Now, so when two compounds have the same molecular formula, but different arrangement of atoms, they are called structural isomers. Okay, and it is, it is these structural isomers and other isomers that make organic chemistry so unique, okay? And this is another example. Now, how do you form the structural isomers? And uh, we'll come back to this, uh, you know, later, uh, again, when you do nomenclature. So you see, this is pentane, okay? So pentane five-membered, five, so you can have the five carbon linear, or you can have one carbon uh, in number two, uh, and take away another carbon. And so there are three isomers you can see. Um, 
So here they are different because the chain length are different. Okay, you can see the main chain, five, five member chain, uh, four member chain, three member chain. Now, if you look at problem number 11.4, uh, so these two formulas, they are same because if I, if I go along the chain and see the length of the chain, they are same. So always look for the length of the chain. Now, in B, uh, in this long chain, you have one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms, one, two, three, four carbon atoms. So uh, in B, these two compounds are basically different compounds, okay? Um, <clears throat> why does the following formula represent a different structural system of the molecules in problem 11.4, part B. So part B, you can see these two compounds. Now compare, uh, you know, the study check. Are they same or different? So we, we notice that these two are different. The third one, is there any similarity with the other two? Yes, uh, you can see that uh, one, uh, this uh, branching is happening at carbon number two. Yes. Here in the carbon number three, they're different compounds. They're different compounds. So that, this is the uniqueness of carbon atom, carbon molecules, carbon chemistry. They, they can you know, generate, carbon can generate so much of variations. And so these are called structural isomers, these three, okay. Uh, so these are, <coughs> they have the same molecular formula, <coughs> but <coughs> different, <coughs> different linkage, okay, different arrangement of the atoms, okay. Professor, but it's still butane? Uh, so this is not butane because this is, this will be one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atom. Yeah. So this is going to be hexane. Uh, hexane. They are all hexanes, but with, uh, uh, we'll see that in the nomenclature okay. that we can give them three different names. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Now, alkanes with substitutions. Okay. Uh, so substitutions uh, in, so we can uh, basically think of uh, this branch, this, uh, you know, uh, they can have an alkyl group, or they can also contain like uh, replacement of hydrogen, like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Okay, we call haloalkanes, halogens. And these are the other type of groups that can be attached as a, as a branch group. Now, when there's a branching, when there's a branching, we call them, uh, we give the uh, substituent name as methyl with the ion, okay? Your, uh, the prefixes with an I. So methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, okay. Now, guide to naming alkane. Okay, guide to naming alkane. Uh, now you can see that it has to be very systematic. Okay, it's the same hexane and we have so many different forms here. So how do you name them? So the guide is identify the longest chain. First, identify the longest chain, okay, and number it. So number it like one, two, three, four, number each of the carbon atom in the longest chain, okay. Now, when I number it, I can, I can start numbering from the left-hand side or the right-hand side. So which carbon atom should I start, which end? That depends on, uh, you start the numbering from that end, which give the substituents the least number, okay. So once, once you have that ready, then you have the location, you know what substitutes are there. Then you write down the prefix name, okay, write down the main chain name, and, and in front of that, you say which group and where. So give the location and give the name of the substitution. So let's look at an example here. Okay. So this is the uh, IUPAC name for this compound. Okay, now identify the long list chain. And then you number it. So when you number it, like if, if you see here, it's a yellow box given, okay. 
So that carries the mentioned name. So how many carbon atoms? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then you number it. One, uh, two, three. Now, why I'm starting from that side? I could have started from the other side. Now, if I start from the other side, this is one, this is two, but the first substitution is carrying a three. Mm -hmm. So here it is carrying two. It is it is carrying a it is carrying a two. So this is this is the preferred nomenclature. Okay. Similarly, uh, you know, so there so if you see branching, uh, many branch, you have to keep following so that you can identify the longest chain. That's very, very important. Okay. So this hexane, what are the substitutions? The substitutions are bromo and methyl. The two methyl. Okay. So four bromo, two four dimethyl hexane. So these numbers come in between. So let me use the iPad. So you have this carbon now, uh, carbon, carbon, carbon. Okay. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, mm -hmm. And you have, you have CH3 here. You have another CH3 here. You have a bromo here. So, Okay, so these are the, you know, substitutions. Okay, so this is called the methyl group. We saw from the list, this is methyl. And the BR is called the bromo or chloro, okay, halogens uh, get the name like that. So first identify what is what is there. Now there are two of them, remember, there's two methyls. Okay. Now, uh, so you start the numbering. So this one, uh, two, three, four, uh, five, and six. So this is, uh, we can see this is hexane. Okay. So you write hexane. Now in front of that, you have to write bromo and you have two methyl groups so if there, if there are more than one we, we use di tri tetra and you go in alphabetical order so oh. alphabetical order oh, bromo. alphabetical order so bromo comes first because b right yeah. so you have a b here b comes first and then will come m okay so uh, so where is the bromo so four bromo Four bromo, we put a hyphen. So number and uh, words are separated by hyphen. Four bromo and then one, two, not one, two, what is that number? Uh, two and four. So two, four, two, four. Now, methyl, we don't write methyl, methyl. So we write dimethyl. So dimethyl and then one word. Okay, so they, they are like one word, dimethyl hexane. Dimethyl hexane. Four bromo, two four, dimethyl hexane. You are naming this one, CH3, CH2. CH. CH2. Kept. CH. CH2. CL. And there, there's a, there's branching here.
and there is another CH3 here. One, two, okay. No, 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 I'm not going to do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> you do it. Uh, yeah. So look at the rules. Look at the rules and try to name this compound. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's easy. Uh, so uh, first, uh, you know, which is the longest chain? It's seven. It's seven. So this so thing hept. is the longest chain. It's going to be happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the longest chain, when you identify the longest chain, give it the, the main chain, main name. The main name is heptane. Okay, heptane is the main name, main chain name. Okay, the hydrocarbon. Now, what are the substitutions you see? See, I mean, methyl, methyl. Methyl, methyl, methyl. and, and chloro. Mm. Okay, so uh, you have this methyl here, okay. and you have methyl here, and you have chloro here. Okay. I just wrote in short form. So how do you number it? Now you need to number it. Where do you start the numbering? From the left or the right? From the left. If we start from the left, the methyl is getting number two. Okay, but if you start from the right, the chloro gets number one. Oh. So we will start from the right. One, two, three. One, two, three. So, okay, hold on. I, I probably made a mistake in the structure. Hmm? Yeah, the CH3 is in the next level. Okay. So, so uh, one, two, oh no, one, two, three, four, five, six. One. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Yeah, six. So, uh, so it's not hexane, it's hexane. Yeah, it's hexane. Yeah, so one. it's hexane. Three, four, five. So, yes. okay, so dimethyl and chloro. Chloro comes first. So, one chloro. Chloro will come first. So, one chloro. <coughs> okay, now whenever there's number and word, uh, you have to put a hyphen. And mm -hmm. that if the two numbers are separated by comma, okay. So now we'll put dimethyl, but where? So where are the dimethyl? Two, four. Okay, hexane. Two, four, dimethyl. <laughs> and hexane. One chloro, two four dimethyl hexane. Okay, let's do few more. Now, uh, given a name, you can you can basically write it and write down the formula. Just follow the opposite opposite order. Okay. So main chain, how many? One, two, five, four, five. Right. And, and then uh, uh, you have substitution at uh, uh, two. This is a substitution. At three, you have a substitution. And at three, you have a substitution. But B, so when you write the name, B comes first. So two bromo, mm. hyphen, right? Hyphen, and then you have bromo, and and then you yeah, have uh, methyls, three, three, because both are in three. Three, three, 
dimethyl. It's very systematic. You will see without that, we'll get lost in organic chemistry, right? Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and dimethyl and uh, pentane. So if the cyclo cyclic ring, okay, so uh, you have this main chain is cyclopentane. If you, if you look at the, uh, this uh, main chain, the main chain is the cyclopentane, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's a methyl. Now, uh, when there's one substitution cyclic, cyclic ring, you do not need to mention number because all these carbon atoms are equivalent. Okay? So you do not need to mention number, but you have to mention number if there are two substitutions, because you can go clockwise, you can go anti-clockwise, uh, and the substitutions have, will have different different number. Okay, but for one, you do not need that. Halo alkanes. So in a halo alkane, the halogen atoms replace the hydrogen, and the halo uh, the substituents are numbered alphabetically. Okay, uh, now many of these simple uh, halo alkanes they have the common names, okay? So you have to know some of these common names because they are very common. So like chloromethane, methyl chloride is the more popular name. So you just use the aisle naming, uh, so older style, um, supropyl and so on. So one fluoropropane is called propyl fluoride. So that, that's for the halogens, just like uh, ethyl alcohol is the common name, mm. okay? But ethanol is the IPEC name. Okay, so we have to keep track of these common names. Otherwise, you know, if you if you tell somebody, uh, can you give me ethanol? You'll never get that. <laughs> Probably <laughs> would not recognize what that is in the in the supermarket, okay, or, or in a bar. <clears throat> so now drawing condensed structural formulas for alkanes, we saw how to do that. Okay. Uh, so here's an example. Uh, so you draw the main chain and number the chain and uh, place the substitution. So this is the reverse, okay? So you are given, let's say, this name, 2,3-dimethylbutane, okay? So first thing, draw the carbon chain. Butane, why? For butane, right? Mm -hmm. And you can either do it like carbon, 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 or you can do the skeletal formula. Okay, and you write carbon, 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 and then, uh, you know, you number it always, one, two, three, four, and it says two, three dimethyl, that means at two and at three, there are two methyl groups. You put them and then fill in the hydrogens. So this is the reverse. Okay. Try to do this one, two bromo, four methyl pentane. Study check, okay, 11.6. So first, Pentane, you know, do it like this example. Do it like this example that is here. Uh, first, identify the pen name pentane. Okay, so it says pentane. That means carbon, carbon. Okay, carbon, carbon, carbon. Okay. Now, uh, number it immediately. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now two bromo. So here I have a BR and four methyl. So this is CS3. And then fill in the hydrogens. So I'll have three hydrogens here. Okay, how many hydrogen here in number four? One. Mm. One. That's good. Thank you. One. How many hydrogen in three? One. Uh, two. Okay. Because you need four total, four bonds, right? Oh, yes. How many, how many in number two? One. One, right. And how many in number one? Three. Three, good. And that's the, that's the formula. One, you are two, done, structural three. formula. And if you are to do, you know, skeletal structure, so one, two, three. Now, something that is often forgotten is that the ends are carbon, okay? So don't forget that the ends are carbon. 
we have to count that four, five, and six. No, four, five, that's it. One, two, three, oh, this is four. This is four and five. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then we are, so it is much quicker, right? We are, and then you put a CS3. You don't have to put a CS3, you can do this. That's good enough. So you are done. So skeletal structure for large molecules is more, more uh, I think, more convenient. Okay, so properties of alkanes. So the alkanes, you know, uh, they are mainly featureless because uh, CH bonds are non-polar. So they are very inactive, okay? So hydrocarbons are very inactive. The only uh, thing that you see is uh, they've been burned as a fossil fuel, okay, as a heating fuel in a car. So if you look at alkanes with one to four carbon atoms, methane, H and propane, butane, they're gases. So you can use them for heating, okay. Uh, alkanes, five to eight, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, they are liquids and highly volatile, like gasoline. And nine to 17, they are liquid, but uh, they, uh, they are more viscous. Mm -hmm. So at 16, 17, 15, they, you know, they basically kerosene, diesel, jet fuels, and they, they also become much thick. And eventually, you know, they can use them as grease, okay, or uh, engine oil, motor oils, okay. <clears throat> uh, so mineral, mineral oils, uh, laxative, lubricants, Alkanes 18 and more, you know, they start to become solid. And so this vaseline, petroleum jelly, uh, paraffin, they are, so there's a distinct change of physical properties with the length of the carbon atom. Solubility and density, alkanes are non-polar, okay, insoluble in water, uh, but soluble in non-polar solvents such as uh, other alkanes. Okay, and they have densities less than water. Okay, um, so usually the you know oil floats on uh, water, and combustion is the only kind of reactions, um, you know, prominent reaction that we see. And when hydrocarbons burn, uh, they produce carbon dioxide and water as the only product. And we have done this like balancing and all those, so, you know. Uh, you know, and they always give out energy. Now, alkanes are the simplest one, uh, simplest hydrocarbon. Now you can have double bonds and triple bonds within the chain. So if, they, if you have double bonds, they're called alkene, in, so that's the ending, in. And in the triple bonds, we can call them alkynes, the okay, ayn. And the uh, naming style is basically similar. Okay, you identify the longest carbon chain that contains the double bond and triple bond. So that's the difference. Uh, you know, number of carbon chain, you know, uh, you have to then number, number it. So when you start the numbering, now the preference goes to double bond or triple bond. Whichever gives the double bond and triple bond the least number. And, uh, and then when you when you, you name the main chain, then you give the location. So that part remains the same. Okay. <clears throat> For uh, naming, uh, you know, cycloalkene. So this is alkene. Okay. Typo. Uh, you basically cyclo cycloalkenes are named. Uh, you know, they have double bonds within the ring. Uh, so if there is no substitutions, you don't need to put a number. But if there is substitution. Uh, the carbon in the double bond are numbered as one and two. So it's contained within that number. If you always start the numbering uh, with the double bond contained within one and two. Okay, so this is an example of naming alkenes and alkynes. Uh, so this is the main chain. The name of the main chain, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So five, that means pentene. But where is the double bond? It can be between one and two, it can be two and three. Okay, so you have to say where. 
and you start the numbering from that end, which gives the double bond that this number. So you are not looking at the substitution, you are looking at the double bond for numbering. So one, two, okay, if I go from the right, is one, two, three, four. So that number from the right, okay. <clears throat> so this two pentane, the main chain is two pentane. Now there's substitution at uh, uh, CS3, where? One, two, three, four. So four methyl, two pentane. Now oftentimes, you might also see this number being brought in in between, uh, just before the in. So you break up this phrase pentane as pen two in. So that's quite acceptable. Uh, not, not only acceptable, but it is preferred when you have very large molecules. Okay. You, you need space to write these numbers. So that's the more preferred way of writing. Four methyl, pen two in is the same thing. Uh, okay, let's do some. Okay, in the whiteboard. Okay. Okay, let's number, uh, let's do this one. Okay. I, I did a skeletal structure. So uh, where would you start? Which side? Always double bond gets the preference. See? What next? Four, five, six, and this is seven. So this is heptane. Heptene. Where is the in? In. Is a, in is a, a starting at which which number? Two. Two. So two heptene and four four dimethyl. Four four. So capital D. Okay, dimethyl. Mm. Four four dimethyl, and then you have two, so two heptene, and or or you can you can write everything that is here, okay. So heptwin, okay, you can write it both ways, okay. So we're back to our you know, <clears throat> slide now. Double bond when you have a double bond, it's alkene. Uh, there's another kind of isomerism that you can see which you call cis trans isomerism. And that is important, very important, because if you look at uh, where the double bond cannot rotate, it's fixed, okay? And because of that, if you look at this two butene, okay? Uh, and, and, and the carbon atoms are uh, in you know, a planar. So there's 120 degree angle between them. So these methyl groups, uh, you know, can be on the same side or on, two different sides of the double bond. And they are two different compounds, cis and trans. And uh, so this is cis butene and this trans butene. Uh, so if it is on the same side, we say cis on the opposite side, we say trans. So apart from the name, we have to mention which compound, which isomer you're talking about. And they are different compounds. The physical properties are different. And, and you know, uh, if you look at, uh, uh, Rhodopsin, okay, uh, or opsin, or the 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 protein that helps us to see, uh, we we our sense of light comes from you know um, this compound where uh, this protein opsin, you know, changes this molecule rhodopsin into uh, cis and trans isomers to by the sensing of light, and when the uh, when the molecule changes, it's like in, in, and this is a big molecule. So it's like sweeping a tail, you know, huge tail uh, from one side to the other. Uh, and, and that changes the shape of the protein. And that is how we sense our light. It's, it's kind of important that way. So here, uh, this cis trans isomerization is used by nature for the activation of rhodopsin by light. Uh, 
and you can see the stripping change that is happening in the molecule from the cis to trans. Uh, so uh, if you look at this, uh, three hexene, okay, uh, three hexene, uh, you, uh, you can have the CS to CH2 on the same side, okay, or, or you can have them in opposite sides, and you can see the molecular set are completely different. Okay, so these are like distinct changes, and the physical properties are also quite uh, quite different. Okay, now reactions of uh, you know uh, alkanes uh, and alkanes. So alkanes, we saw the reactions are basically burning. Same with alkenes. Okay, uh, is basically uh, burning is one of the important reactions. But but because it is double bond and double bond is kind of a functionality. It has some additional features. So uh, this double bond can react. And, and these are called addition reactions, okay? because you can add a molecule into the double bond. Like hydrogenase and hydrogens, when you're adding hydrogen, it's like, uh, you know, HH. You are putting one H on one carbon, another H on another carbon, or you can have a HX kind of molecule. You put one uh, H in one carbon and the X on the other carbon. Now X can be anything. If X is OH, then it's a water. Okay, so, so hydrogen is one permanent reaction. Okay, and and also if it is HX like uh, like HCl, HBr, then you can definitely get uh, a chloro, okay, chloro substitution. Or if, if instead you say I have protein, Okay, both that would Cl2, like you have this H2 here, kind of Cl2. So you can have dichlorination. So both the chlorine atoms, okay, one on each carbon atoms of the double bond. <clears throat> so this is a hydrogenation reaction. So hydrogenation means you are adding hydrogen, okay. So basically HH addition at the double bond, okay, hydrogen, hydrogen. And that is true for all double bonds. Now, in the case of uh, uh, in the in the in the case of hydrogenation, it's just not adding hydrogen. You need a catalyst, usually platinum, nickel, palladium. Okay, so you see hydrogenation of oil. We have this uh, solid, you know, oil um, uh, available like plant butter. Okay, so this is how they make it. They take the oil and the hydrogen added using usually nickel uh, because platinum is costly uh, and passing hydrogen through it, adding the hydrogen back and it becomes solid. So hydrogen is addition of water. It's the same addition reaction, HX kind, so HOH, that's water. So you are adding H on one and OH on the other, okay? Now, when you are adding, uh, you know, if it's a symmetric molecule, it doesn't really matter where H, where H goes and where OH goes, okay? Uh, it is the same. But if it's an unsymmetric molecule, okay, um, so different number of hydrogen atom, uh, that's unsymmetric, then there are two possible products. H can go in carbon one or it can go to carbon two. Where should it go? Which is more preferred, okay? So the rule says that the hydrogen attaches to the carbon atom, that has the greater number of hydrogen atom. So that's the more preferred. That means both the products will form, one will be greater than the other, okay? So in this, in this example here, uh, you see the end carbon atom has greater number of hydrogen atom. That is where the hydrogen is going to go. And the product predominantly will be two propanol. You will still get the one propanol, but in less quantity, okay? And that, you know, uh, that works uh, or that is more applicable when you have an unsymmetric uh, alkene. Uh, so to draw the condensed structural formula for the product that forms uh, in the following hydrogen reaction. So you are adding HOH, okay? So you see hydrogen will come to the end carbon atom because that's the greater number and this is the preferred product. So if you so now we haven't done the naming of alcohols. So this is like two degree alcohol. All right. 
but let's do this. The A, if you do A, uh, addition of hydrogen, that's straightforward, right? That's a uh, symmetric, you know, the double bond. Uh, so uh, symmetric molecule. So hydrogen, hydrogen it doesn't make a difference. When you are adding HOH in B, the substrate is symmetric. So no difference, whether you put the H on the uh, left or the right carbon atom. How about number C? Okay, so what is the answer? Okay, now here you have one hydrogen atom and here you don't have a hydrogen atom. So where do you think it will go? Let's say this carbon number one, carbon number two. Where would the hydrogen go? So HOH, right? So don't forget the hydrogen. So you have to count the hydrogen. HO is this hydrogen will go here. And this OH will go here. Next is uh, aromatic compounds. Uh, so aromatic compounds, aromatic compounds are compounds uh, containing the benzene ring. Now the benzene ring had been quite interesting. So benzene for long, you know, so benzene was isolated by Michael Faraday in 1825, CCH6. And for long people wondered what the structure can be. So it was Kekule, uh, you know, uh, who first figured out the structure. So it has three double bonds. It has only six carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms. So what is, you know, because at that time, you know, nobody had any knowledge that carbon can be that versatile. And and it was Kekule who first said that, well, uh, it will be ring structure. And later it was, you know, proven that uh, benzene does have a ring structure with three double bonds. Uh, and this is the structure that you see, okay? Now in the skeletal form, we write the benzene as, uh, you know, this uh, ring with a, with, a, with a ring inside. Okay, this ring resembles the resonating structure. So these double bonds that you see uh, are basically, the, you know, there are two resonances. So resonance means you can have similar structures, Lewis structures, okay? Um, and the average structure is uh, basically the overall structure is average of these two resonating structures. Okay, so actually benzene, uh, so if you think of benzene, uh, it's more like, so if I uh, quickly uh, move to my whiteboard, um, Uh, so, uh, so this is your, if you think, uh, this is sp2 uh, carbon, that, that means this planar trigonal, each of these carbon is trigonal planar. That means if I, if I draw it like a uh, structure, it, it is more like a flat structure. So, something like this, I'm trying to do as best as I can <laughs> uh, with this drawing. So, uh, this is like a flat structure. So it's on, on, on this um, plane. So if you think of this is a plane, okay, this is like a plane, okay. Uh, and these are the hydrogens, you know, on the same plane, okay. So I'm drawing the hydrogens here. And you can see these three bonds. And then each of these will have these double bonds, right? So these double bonds are formed by the overlap of the p orbitals. And so if you think of it that way, that uh, the p orbitals on each of the carbon atoms. Now, when, you are, when we are actually showing the structure, we are trying to show that uh, they're overlapping, okay? Something like this. So you have, you have one underneath here, here, here also. Okay. Uh, And, and and when they're forming double bond, we are showing that they're forming double bond like this, um, like this, and like this. 
Okay, but it is also true that they can also overlap here. They can also overlap here and they can also overlap here. So overall structure is basically this, all these uh, pre orbitals overlap together, okay, forming this a uh, huge delocalized structure. And same, uh, you will we'll see uh, the pre orbitals will overlap, uh, you know, below, uh, above and below the pen, okay. So if you think of it that way, so uh, this is this is the structure of benzene, okay, like a sandwich structure. And, and so in order to uh, denote that, we basically say that this is the structure, okay, with a with delocalized electron. Okay, and 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 so benzene is a very stable molecule because of the delocalization and uh, and the properties of these aromatic rings, the way they react, are quite different from uh, alkane. So ben benzene and aromatic rings has has huge chemistry separate from the aliphatic, aliphatic compounds or, or the linear linear chain carbon compounds. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our slide. So okay. Uh, so this is the benzene ring and benzene can have substitutions. Now these three substitutions that you see are very important ones and you have to memorize them. Toluene, aniline, phenol. And what are these? These are called the functional groups. CH3 is called the methyl, NH2 is the amine and OH is the hydroxy. Okay, so these are, uh, and they, for, for them, when you think of the IUPAC name, um, IUPAC said, okay, because that's so important, let, let's take this as the IUPAC name. So, uh, toluene is the IUPAC name, so as aniline, NH2, and phenol. Okay. So, these are the IUPAC names, and another, there's another one, benzaldehyde. We'll come across that later. These four of them are taken as, uh, you know, uh, IUPAC name. So if you have a derivative of them, you start with this as the main main name. Okay. Uh, for others, for others like uh, if you have one substitution, you do not need like any ring compound. You do not need any number because all these carbon atoms are equivalent. Okay. Uh, but if the two substitutions, then you need numbers, and you can see why. Okay. So if I go clockwise. Uh, you know, it will have a different number if I go anti clockwise. So uh, you have to go in that direction, which will give the substitutions the least number. Okay. So uh, one, two, uh, you know, uh, this is one to dichlorobenzene. So you have to number it in the clockwise direction. Uh, but there can be instances where you have to number anti clockwise depending <coughs> on the derivative. Okay. So you have three. Uh, you know, dichlorobenzene, one, two, one, three, one, four. Now they also have another name, okay, very popular name, ortho meta para. So do not need to write one, two. If it's ortho, people will understand. And these are very popular, okay, uh, so very commonly used. Uh, so uh, you should know this, okay. And, and then one three is called the meta. So this is one three, this is one, two, this is one, three. So one three is called the meta. One three is called the meta, and then we have one four. One four is called the para. Now, uh, we usually use, use a suffix like this. So for ortho, we put a O. Do not write ortho, totally not necessary. Uh, M, so it is italicized. Underline means uh, you put the italics there, okay? So, and para. So if, if I want to write this, uh, uh, 
this molecule here, uh, like uh, I will write ortho O dichlorobenzene or ortho dichlorobenzene. Okay. And when you are numbering it, you are starting the numbering uh, we, we, uh, with the carbon that had the substitutions. You are starting the numbering there. Okay, that is our one. Okay, uh, always start from it's a carbon having substitution. Now, uh, if there are groups like aniline, then that becomes your uh, root name. So that means if I have aniline here, NH2, right? So NH2 and then a chlorine. So NH2 um, and then a bromo, let's say the example that we have over there. So bromo, so that means my root name, my root name, this is my main chain. I'm taking aniline as the main chain. So this is uh, one, so I always start one here then two, so I have to go clockwise because that gives the bromo the least number. So three bromoaniline, and I can also write meta bromoaniline. I can also write meta bromoaniline. So both are correct. I was discussing this one, uh, this naming this compound here. Uh, so uh, the main chain is toluene. Now if you number it, uh, chloro gets number three, bromo gets number four, but when you write it, you have to write the bromo first because B comes first before C. So four bromo, three chloro, okay, toluene. So that's the name, what is it? Okay, four bromo, three chloro, toluene. And the main chain, <clears throat> the main framework is toluene, okay? Now, if you look at this one, um, the study check 11.11, .11, uh, give the IPEC name of the following. So these two group, attached groups, the ethyl, the two of them, so diethyl, where? One, three. So one, three, diethyl benzene. Now diethyl benzene is one word. Okay, it's not separated. Okay, so uh, don't separate. That's the typo. Okay, now let us try to name this, okay? So I'll clear this out. Okay, so 1135, 1135, and this is A. So A, we have this compound here. Now I can I can draw it any way I want as long as it is you know, maintaining the same order. CS3 and then we have we have a chloro. So this is toluene and uh, if we are numbering it is one, then you have a two. Okay, so what is the name of this? Two chloro. What else? Two so I'm sharing my white pad, right? Yes. Quite good. Two chlorobenzene. Now this is one word, okay? Do not separate them. Uh, not benzene. Not it's toluene. It's toluene. Oh. So two chloro toluene. Okay. Next one is easy. Di uh, So next one is ethyl. Italian. You don't need to write one, okay? Don't need to write one because there's only one substitution. CH2, CH3. That's ethyl group. CH2, CH3. Okay. So ethyl benzene. Ethyl benzene, one word. Okay, how about C? Now I could have also written A as orthochlorotoluene. 
Okay, ortho or just O is good enough. O so, chloro following because it's one two. So how about C? So C is three chlorine. So we are going at this. And each of these are chlorine. So how many of them? Three. three. So try. And where are they? One three five. So one three five try chloro benzene. One three five. Try chloro T capital. The first letter. Try chloro. Benzene. Okay, now, if you look at 11.36, so you're writing it down, right? Yeah. Or you can uh, watch the record later, but I, I think write it down because that we don't have to um, have the new on test. Uh, so how about 36A? So two bromo, right? Oh. Two bromo. And 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 oh. the molecule, the main chain is toluene. Toluene. Okay. Also called the ortho. You can also add ortho. Ortho bromo toluene. So in B, this is a phenol. So this is a phenol, which and then you have a chloro. Now here it doesn't really matter uh, which direction you number. So we have this um, phenol. So there's OH here and the two CL, three chloro, dichloro, phenol, one one. Okay. Uh, and what about C? So C is basically We have this bromo and two chloros here. So you start the numbering from B, Br, so three five, sorry, not three five, one bromo, one bromo. C5 dichloro. Okay. So this is now the opposite, okay, 11.37. So look at 11.37, toluene we know. So that's kind of easy, uh, but uh, do the next one. B. Which is one, three dichlorobenzene.
and then we have C, which is uh, polyethyl toluene. Try to do this too. Draw the benzene ring first, okay, and then put numbers starting from anywhere as one, uh, then one and three is directly. So that one is quite simple. So, this is a one and three. One, two, three. So, so you can go from name to structure and structure to name. So four ethyl toluene. So, so toluene, first draw toluene. So this is our toluene and then put numbers. So go systematically, okay? Don't try to memorize, just systematically. Uh, so these are my numbers. So four ethyl, that means at position four, I have a ethyl group, so CH2, CH3. Now I can also write it as, remember, para, para ethyl. Okay, 1138. 1138. Draw the skeletal formula for each of the following compounds. Skeletal formula, so propyl benzene. Well, we did skeletal formula. I don't know what extra they're asking, uh, but whatever we are doing at skeletal, okay? Uh, and benzene, we do skeletal, we don't do anything else. But anyway, it's our extra practice. So propyl benzene. And this is one word actually. So propyl benzene, we have this and one, two, three. So that's our propyl benzene. In B, we have four bromo anilin. So if we go reverse, you have to draw anilin first. So anilin is now in the skeletal structure, all the heteroatoms, that means the atoms that are not carbon and hydrogen, you have to write it and write all other groups attached to it. That means if there's a methyl attached, the hydrogen attached to write that. So we have to write in H2. And four bromo, that means this is our. And similarly, if you look at C, it's one, two, four, dichlorobenzene. So this is a benzene ring. Try chloro one. So let's number it. Okay. So one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six. So we have a one, we have a two, and we have three. That's it. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward and pretty systematic, okay? Um, all right. Let's uh, go to the slide. Now, name of some common aromatic compounds. These are, you know, these are like, uh, we know these things. We have heard about them. TNT, 2,4, it actually is 2,4 trinitrotoluene. 246, ibuprofen, that's organic molecule, phenylalanine, amino acid, <coughs> vanillin, 
This is acetaminophen, which is N acetyl uh, acetamide. And aspirin, which is basically an ester. Okay. The parahydroxy acetyl, acetyl of, of this orthohydroxy uh, you know, compound. Uh, now, there you will also come across this kind of fuse rings. These are called fuse rings. Naphthalene, so naphthalene is two benzene rings fused together. Anthracene is three. Now these three can be uh, you know, joined in two different ways. If it's linearly joined, you say anthracene. If it is bent like this, we say phenanthine. And then these are huge molecules like pyrene, benzopyrenes, uh, or the porphyrin ring that, that you see in, uh, uh, in chlorophyll okay, or hemoglobin. So you'll come across these uh, molecules quite often in, in uh, biochemistry, in microbiology. Okay, uh, now, so this is the summary. Okay, so, uh, and, and this, is, this is the uh, basis, I would say, foundation of organic chemistry uh, that we just covered. So take time, work on them. So carbon atoms has four covalent bonds. And remember that, for a, a saturated carbon atom, if every bond is a single bond, it has a tetrahedral. So each of these carbon atoms has a tetrahedral set. Okay. Now, as to the organic compounds, they tend to be nonpolar. And because they're nonpolar, they're insoluble in water, they're, they're low boiling, they're low melting, they're flammable. And that's why they're used as fossil fuel. When a hydrocarbon bonds, the product that you get is always carbon dioxide in water. That means both are gas. They're, they're going to evaporate out. No residue left, right? <clears throat> so you can write this structure in the expanded form, in this condensed form. Uh, you can write the skeletal form. Now you have to know all three of them and the difference between them. So in the exam or in the quiz, you come across questions where sometimes you are asked to write the expanded form, sometimes the condensed form, or sometimes the skeletal form. And then, you know, you know we did the IUPAC nomenclature. Uh, so we, are cover, we covered here alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and aromatic compounds. So alkanes are all single bond, okay? Alkenes have a double bond. Now you can have two double bonds, okay, or three double bonds also. And, and in, uh, so uh, if you look at uh, all this, Arachidonic acids uh, or, or your omega oils, they have you know multiple double bonds. Okay, many. So the different omega oils that you get, uh, they vary by the number of double bonds. So alkynes have a triple bond, and then we saw aromatic compound. They are called aromatic because of the aroma. They they are usually they have a nice scent. Okay, that's why they got the name aromatic, okay, uh, arrow from aroma. Uh, and then we also learn about cisterns isomerism in alkenes, okay. And they undergo uh, uh, addition reaction. The addition reactions, uh, if it is hydrogen kind of chlorine, symmetric molecule, it's not a problem. But whenever disymmetric molecule like water or anything like HCl, HX, the hydrogen will act to that carbon atom that you know, has the uh, greatest number of hydrogen atoms. So that's the rule. It will be the predominant one, not exclusive, but predominant. Okay. And this is the summary of naming compounds. Okay. So alkanes, uh, you know, CH3, CH2, CH3, this is a propane, so always ends with N. Okay, if it's alkene, it ends with an E. And alkynes end with the ion. So that's the basic naming framework. Now, apart from that, if the substitution, you name the substitution um, and the location of the substitution, and the word and the numbers are separated by a hyphen. If the two numbers are several more than one numbers, you separate the number by comma. Okay. Now, when you're writing the alkene, you have to say where is the double bond? Okay. It is not so much for propene, but if it is a butene, 
you have to survive. Is it one beauty, not two beauty? In? Okay. Now you can write beaut one in, or you can write beaut two in. The two style of you know, writing, both acceptable. <coughs> and when you are numbering, you have to take the double bond or triple bond, the least number. So when you are numbering the aromatics, you know, there's one, uh, you know, one substitution, don't number, don't put numbers. If there are uh, two substitutions, okay, then you start the numbering the clockwise or anti-clockwise, giving the uh, substitution the least number. And then, um, yeah, um, and then we also learned about ortho para, ortho meta para. So one two is called ortho, uh, one three is called meta, and one four is called para. Okay. All right, so we are at the end of this chapter.